story, two story, condo, B and B. Four bath, one me, no key, like I did a B and E. B and me, so good, so hood, so not worried about it. Hey guys, Mark the Mentor here, and I'm back with another video. Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and also hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the upcoming videos. Now there's plenty of different things that you can do with a box truck to make money. I wanna focus on logistics. I wanna focus on the delivery industry, the logistics industry dealing with box trucks, all right? So there's three main ways that you can make money in the logistics delivery industry with the box truck. One is you can play the load boards, two, you can sign up with a logistics company and do furniture and appliance delivery. Or three, you can sign up and do Amazon Relay. Now, Amazon Relay is the newest um, entry, so to speak, into how to make money logistically in the logistics industry with a box truck. But it's one of the more popular ones because it's pretty much no touch freight and you know Amazon has volume. So um, a lot of people flock to that. Not a lot of new people in the industry flock to the Amazon uh, Relay as their first choice on making money. So I wanna show you how to make a million dollars, right? Okay, so in order for me to show you how to do that, what I wanna do is I want to kind of parallel it with how I was able to do it. That way you can listen to my story as I explain it and then you can kind of formulate your own plan based off past experiences of mine. And then you can kind of set your plan up on how you want to go about it. So the first year that I was able to generate a million dollars worth of revenue for my business was 2014. Now, when I say generate, that means I was able to go out and pull in a million dollars worth of revenue. That doesn't mean Mark has a million dollars. No, Mark doesn't have a million dollars. Um, the company generated a million dollars in revenue um, coming in. Now, it cost me $800,000 to make that million. So basically what I'm saying is I ran on a 20% margin. So I had a million dollars come in, a little over a million dollars, and I spent $800,000 to run that business. So that means I took home uh, 200,000, 20% profit margin, which is good in the trucking industry. 20% is, is high in the trucking, the trucking industry. The average is about 6%. Some years it's lower than that. Some years it's a little bit higher than that. This year, 2022, it's probably going to be lower than that considering um, the fuel crisis that we're having and considering the low rates on the load boards. So um, 2014 was the first year that I was able to generate a million dollars of income for my trucking company. Now to keep my margin or to get my margin up to 20%, I had to do a lot of stuff myself. So I was running a fleet of trucks. I'll get into how many later on as I tell you guys how I did it and you guys can kind of parallel and formulate your plan based off this story and how I'm kind of setting things up. Um, the way I was able to get my, my margin up to 20%, I had to do a lot of stuff myself. Now, when I say a lot of stuff, I mean like a lot of stuff, like stuff that a person who was bringing in that type of revenue would have probably just paid somebody to do. Now, I did have an office staff outside of my drivers that were on the road uh, bringing in the money. But when I say a lot of stuff, for instance, when I got tired of sending my trucks to the truck, truck wash, paying 25, 30, $40 or whatever it was, at that time to get my trucks washed. What I did, I said, well, you know what? We got a warehouse. I went out and bought a power washer and on days when my trucks didn't move, like Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, days where the trucks were all sitting, I would get up early in the morning, five, six o'clock, go to the yard, pull each truck out one by one, power wash the outside, open up the cargo area, power wash the floor, power wash the walls, power wash the ceiling, go in the cab and clean it out and not park that truck and go get the next one. I do that every holiday, but that eliminated uh, this, the money that I was spending to get the trucks clean. Um, 
Another way I was able to save money was if I sent the truck in for a PM and they called and said, hey, this truck needs an air filter. It's going to be an extra 50 bucks. I said, don't worry about it. Do everything else. Send the truck back. When the truck got back to the yard, I ordered the air filter, 17, 18 bucks. And that was something I knew how to do myself. So every little penny I could save, I would. So that's something else that you guys should incorporate when you want to try to maximize your profits and get to that million dollars in gross revenue. Remember to, um, if, if there's anything that you can save money on and do it yourself, then that's what you want to do. So most of my success in the box truck game has come from final mile delivery. Now I've been in the industry since 2010. Amazon existed, but there was no Amazon relay at the time. I don't even think they had the DSP program at the time. Okay. So there was no Amazon relay, none of that. Right. So the way people were making money with box trucks back then were doing final mile. That's how I got in the game. All right. So around 2013, I was, I, I, I owned a moving company that I started in 2010. Let me, let me just state that I started a moving company in 2010. And actually I did a video on how to start a moving company. I'll put that link here or up here somewhere. And, and three years later in 2013, I got a call. All right. I got a call from a logistics company. The name of that company, that company, it, it exists, but it's not called that any, this anymore. It was called dynamics. So for any of you, who, for any of you old heads or older heads that are out there that have been in the box truck game for a while, you remember dynamics, which is called T force final mile now. So everybody taking notes that want to get into the logistics of final mile with your box truck, write this company now. It's called T force final mile. That's what they're called now. Back then it was called dynamics. Anyway, I get a call. Hey, um, can we speak to Mark? Boom, the call gets to me. This is Mark. My name is so-and-so. I'm not going to say his name. I do remember the guy's name. I'm not going to say it. This is so-and-so from Dynamics. Um, we have this account with Ikea, and we've been having a lot of problems with it. You know, our independent contractors, are just there's just a lot of claims. So in a meeting, we decided maybe we should reach out to some moving companies and... Um, see if we can bring some moving companies in and see if they'd like to onboard with an Ikea contract. Um, since moving companies deal with furniture every day, maybe we can reduce the claims because we're on the verge of losing this contract. Um, can you come in for a meeting? Okay, I'll come in for a meeting and hear you out. Now, I didn't know what Final Mile or none of that was at the time. I was a moving guy. I ran a successful moving company. And even he said, you know, we got I got a list of moving companies and your company's at the top of the list. So you're the first person I'm gonna bring in. So boom, I go out there, I go in, they lay this packet out for me. So when I see the numbers, now this is 2013, they're like, boom, you got two options. And this is where they kind of messed up. They said, man, we can pay you $33 a stop, or you can take a guarantee of $500 a day, Monday through Friday, or $600 a day on the weekend. I said, give me the guarantee. Now. They said, okay, how many trucks can you bring in? I said, how many trucks do you need? They said, man, we need five trucks right away. Once you get on board, I said, well, I can start you with one the first week, and then I can I can up it to three the following week, All right? So I onboarded, and um, we got started. So I was running three trucks for Dynamics, running this IKEA route. Now, they had two routes, right? They had a morning route, which was a bunch of trucks, and then they had an evening route. I ran the evening routes because none of the ICs in the morning wanted to come back in the evening to do that route. That 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 IKEA for anybody that's familiar with IKEA deliveries, that delivery that that evening delivery is five to nine. Nobody wanted to do those five to nine. I said I'll take. Them. I was thirsty at the time. I was young. I was ambitious, and I was growing. So I took it. That's fifteen hundred dollars a day. I'm getting 500 guarantee per truck per day per route. So it's 1500, right? I'm paying I'm paying I'm paying 175 to the crew, it's two guys on each truck, 100 to the to the driver, 75 to the helper, right? And I was averaging about $50, $60 a day in fuel. So 225, let's just round it to 250. So each truck was bringing in $250 a day. 
Now, there were days when Ikea's freight was low. And you can only imagine that, you know, when a company's paying you $500 just to do one stop, you know, on days where, you know, they just didn't have the vibe, it would literally be one stop. Eventually, I got called into a meeting and they were like, hey, man, we got to renegotiate this, you know. Um, so ultimately, I didn't make, you know, I, I didn't run um, three trucks consistently that year, but I still made $360,000 off that contract. Some days I send three trucks, well, on the weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday would pretty much be three trucks. Then like Tuesday through Friday would be two trucks. Those were the slow days. But I still was able to pull in $360,000 off that contract. Now, Dynamic, Dynamics um, had three big contracts at that time. They had Ikea, which they ended up losing. So as I, I, I ended up losing that account because they lost it. But I don't even know if I'm gonna tell that story. That's down the line. But okay, so they had Ikea, they uh, had Office Depot, and they had Granger. Now we were doing so good with Ikea because my trucks were showing up every day. One of the other reasons why they were looking out to hire other um, companies that they wanted to hire companies outside of the, the claims that the ICs were doing were the ICs had bad attendance. So, you know, an independent contractor that has his own truck pretty much is their own boss. They do what they want to do. If they come in, they come in. If they don't, they don't. Now, the flip coin is the logistics company has a national contract with a company. And in order to get this national contract, they promised this company, yo, we're going to deliver your freight. So, you know, the, the, the company doesn't care how it gets done. They just want it done because they sold that delivery at point of purchase to the customer and the customer wants their stuff, right? So I used to always get calls, you know, hey, Mark, you got another truck to help with this, help with that. So one day I get a call from Dynamics from the operations supervisor, operations manager over the Office Depot contract. And he's like, you know, I, I, I'm hearing that you got a lot of trucks, you know, and I had a good amount of trucks, but I didn't have a lot. Another thing you guys want to always do, you want to always sell yourself higher because you never know when an opportunity will present itself. And when an opportunity presents itself, especially if it's a big money contract, you always say yes. You say yes, you take it, and then you figure out how to get it done once you get that contract. So anyway, the operations manager for um, Office Depot calls and said, man, I hear you're doing good things over with the IKEA contract. Would you be interested in coming in for a meeting? We really need help with this Office Depot contract. So I go in, similar to like how I went when they called me in for the IKEA. I went in, I met with the uh, operations manager over the Office Depot contract, and he was like, basically, um, how many trucks can you send? So I can send as many as you want. Now, in my mind, I could send as many as you want. I just gonna have to find the drivers and the trucks. But if 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 they gave me the contract, I was gonna get the drivers and the truck. I wasn't worried about that. It was just getting the contract. So we got to negotiating the money. They wanted to pay me that per piece, and I'm like, I'm not taking that per piece. One, I'm not taking that per piece because I don't got. The, the, the time or the resources every day to figure out how many pieces each driver is down on a truck. That, that, that's, that math is too hard. Every day, the money gonna be fluctuating. They might get 50 pieces this day, 150. This day, this truck might have 150. This truck got 200. That truck got 50. No, that's, that's too confusing. If I'm finna be running a lot of trucks, I need, my, I need the math to be easy, right? I need a guarantee. I need to know what I'm getting every day. That's one less thing I don't need to try to be figuring out, right? So they were like, what do you want? I said, it's simple. I knew I was going to pay my, 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 my driver. This was a one guy contract because Office Depot, it was at, at that time, like I said, this is before Amazon Relay. This is before Amazon even was really the everything website. They were selling other things outside of books at that point. But their, 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 their final mile, they were still trying to figure out that final mile process. They were dealing a lot with FedEx and UPS. They were really just getting started selling um, things outside of books. 
But anyway, um, so that Office Depot was a one-man contract, um, and it was pretty much just delivering like office supplies to schools, hospitals, like big corporate um, places, a lot of government buildings, like 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 schools would order pallets of paper, like it was just we had pallets of paper or pallets of boxes of pen, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm like, man, the, the math is simple, man. I'm gonna pay my driver a hundred dollars a route a day. Um, gas was gonna cost me about, they, the, cause where my route was gonna be for my trucks, it was gonna be a little bit bit of a drive and where their, their the, the warehouse was, it was a little bit of a drive from where my warehouse was. I was spending about 50 to 75 dollars a day on, on fuel, depending on the route. And I wanted to pull in at a hundred dollars a day minimum. So I said, man, I need I need three hundred guarantee three hundred dollar guarantee per route. Eventually, uh, eventually, of course, they said yeah because they just they needed the freight off because it was so much freight getting left behind every day. So they accepted the three hundred um, per route per truck. Fast forward after about a month or two, I was running nine trucks. Office Depot a day consistently consistently nine trucks a day 300 a day that's 2700 gross revenue that I was pulling in 2700 gross revenue I was pulling in every single day for Office Depot so at that time that Dynamics Warehouse um, here owned 43 Office Depot routes and my company had nine of those local routes and we were running those routes consistently. All right, so that was my largest contract and I'll do the math here. Um, so Office Depot, Ikea were my one and two large accounts and then I had like another smaller account which was like an ancillary account which was um, this company called, they're still around so Write this company down. They still do um, a lot of exercise equipment. They have like Dick Sports, um, Home Goods, um, and some other accounts. I don't I don't deal with them anymore, but they're good people. Um, and if anybody needs any contacts, I, I'm still cool with the the national guy uh, over there for um, bringing people in. I'm not gonna say his name, but um, me and him are still cool. Um, the name of that company is called Select Express. All right, Select Express is another company. Um, if you're looking to do final mile delivery, I know they deal a lot with Dick Sports. I don't know what other accounts they have now because obviously accounts change. Logistics companies get new accounts and lose accounts every day. But that was like another account I had. I made six figures is that low six figures. About $100,000 I was pulling in with uh, Select Express. Um, the price point on that account was very low. You know, we did a lot of um, Container Store, West Elm, uh, Crate and Barrel. We did um, a lot of Bye Bye Baby. That was their biggest account for us at the time was Bye Bye Baby. But, you know, so we were like delivering a lot of baby cribs and assembling them. Um, it was a lot more work than what they were paying at the time, but it was a good account to, you know, keep all my trucks rolling. At that time, I was running 15 trucks. So Office Depot kind of catapulted me. And that's why I say you, got, you guys want to find a logistics company that has large accounts. Because when you when you get with a logistics company that got a large account, that account is going to bring you in so much revenue. That's what what's going to catapult you. So between Office Depot and I, IKEA, I was buying a truck every month. So much revenue was coming in, and I was pushing it right back out. So that's why you know I was I spent so much money. I bought a truck every month in 2014. I bought seven trucks just that year alone. So this ancillary account with Select Express, it was just a small account. Some days I would lose on it, you know, but I was, because I was making so much money with those other two accounts and then I still had my moving company. So that was 2014 and that was the first year I was able to gross $1 million with my final mile uh, delivery business. 
Um, and I was able to repeat that process for the next two years. After those next two years, I started to downsize because I saw the industry, uh, the industry, the industry shifting. Amazon was really pushing its way in. They were pushing a lot of companies out of business. Um, a lot of freight started to transition to Amazon Logistics headquarters because they had teams out selling the companies like Office Depot, like, hey, why don't you just run all your online sales through us? We'll handle uh, the logistics and the fulfillment of it. And the companies that were smart, they did, you know, because Amazon was really steamrolling a lot of companies. If you guys, some of you guys remember that were around the industry then, 2016, 2017, they put a lot of people out of business. So I transitioned to a company, a logistics company called Nonstop Delivery out of Chantilly, Virginia. Now, they're a logistics company that, that'll deal with you if you have a warehouse. I had a warehouse. So I wanted to eliminate the need to send my trucks to a logistics company to load and then go do delivery. I said, I want to use my utilize my warehouse. I found a, a, the largest company that can middle mile me freight and then we can warehouse this stuff and I can dispatch my trucks and load my trucks with freight from here. So the trucks with middle mile freight, we had US mattress and one of the bigger accounts that we had um, with nonstop delivery was Home Depot. So they have Home Depot. So if you have a warehouse and you have box trucks and you're looking to have freight middle mile to your warehouse where you would dis dispatch it out from your warehouse, you wanna look up and, and try to onboard with a company called Nonstop Delivery out of Chantilly, Virginia. So that, that's basically it. There's no special anecdote or special formula to make a million dollars, you know, in the box truck game, you know what I'm saying? It's it's all simply uh, uh, running, uh, running enough trucks and taking on big dollar amount loads or big dollar amount contracts you know if you know if you're if you're taking on small loads and you're running multiple trucks then it's going to be harder to get to that million dollars if you're running a fleet of trucks and you're taking on big loads it's going to be easier to get to that million dollars so if if a million dollars is your goal you need to set a plan on how much you need to to be coming in each month so if you got if you got 10 trucks right you got 10 trucks you know you need to be pulling in between 80 to 100 uh, 80 to 100 thousand dollars a month you know if you want to get to that million dollar goal because you know it's going to fluctuate it's going to fluctuate so you pull in a hundred thousand dollars a month that's going to put you with 10 trucks it's going to put you right at 1.2 million you know i was doing when i was pulling in um a million dollars in gross revenue i was pulling in ninety thousand dollars a month that was my average so you know and i was running consistently seven days a week i was running 12 to 15 trucks you know so um that's just some simple math for you for you to to, to think about so it's it's kind of all up to you. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoy a little backstory on me and how I got started in the final mile delivery business. I hope you guys were able to take some of my backstory and kind of formulate um, some ideas on how you want to go about it. Um, I hope the tips that I gave at the end, you know what I'm saying, uh you guys use that i did name drop a few logistics companies so anybody that was out there looking for logistics companies to possibly apply with to try to onboard with i hope you guys got that information um other than that i'm gonna end this video make sure you guys smash that subscribe button hit the like button and also hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the upcoming videos and i'm out True story, new story, two story, condo, B&B &B.